sorry, my hair is still wet. I just got out of the shower, but I only have a small window of time to film today. So, you know, whatever. So today, hi. <laughs> Hi everybody, welcome to Sugar Glider Diaries. I'm Kimberly. Today I'm gonna to talk about Sugar Glider introductions. Please remember that all of my videos are not coming from a place of I know everything and I'm an expert. They're just coming from, this is what I've been doing for my sugar gliders and my situation and passing that information on to you guys. So if you don't want to do things the way that I did, please don't feel like you need to. I'm just trying to help you learn through my experiences but I am in no way trying to say that I'm an expert on anything really related to sugar gliders. As far as sugar glider introductions go, there's quite a few different theories out there. From what I found in my research, there's three basic theories, and then there's quite a few different variations of those theories. I will spend the most time talking about what I chose to do just because that's the only personal experience I have to reference, but I also wanna note that it's the not the only way to do things. That. And this is after you've already gotten a health clear by a vet on all of your gliders, or you've gotten all your gliders from the same reputable breeder or two breeders that you feel confident you don't need to get fecal tests on. So really briefly, I'll talk about fecal tests. So basically gliders can have parasites, especially if, they are, if there's any health concerns or they're coming from a questionable environment. You would want to take them to a vet. They will, you'll have them get an exam probably, it would be a good idea and then get, drop off a fecal sample. They will test that fecal sample for parasites. You wanna ask for a fecal float and a fecal smear and they will test that fecal sample for parasites. Then 30 days later, you wanna do that same test again. They don't need another exam, but the fecal test needs to happen because with the life cycle of a lot of parasites, they could be dormant uh, to where you wouldn't see it, but then 30 days later, you might see it. So that's why you need two fecal tests to rule out any parasites before you introduce a glider to a colony or one glider to another if there's any question of the glider's health or previous uh, situation. If they're coming from a very reputable breeder that you trust and does not have any history with parasites, has maybe even already gotten a fecal test recently done with their gliders, that kind of thing, then maybe that wouldn't be necessary. But that is something that a lot of people choose to do before introducing their gliders. With my introduction, I had two girls, Celaluna and Atiri, and then about a year later, I got Balki. I got them all from the same breeder, so I chose not to do the fecal test because I trusted that the breeder bred healthy animals that, and they were getting testing done on their animals anyway. So I did not do a a quarantine period with them or a fecal test. But with Pika, because she was a rehome and because there was some health concerns, I did opt to do a fecal test and a quarantine for 30 days so that I didn't risk passing any parasites onto my colony. She didn't end up having any parasites and that was all good, but better safe than sorry in a lot of cases. So that, that already said, and that already set aside, this is all assuming that you're ready to introduce and you've already done the testing that you feel is necessary. Lots of times what people will do if they don't feel like there needs to be a test or they've already done the test is they will start swapping scents. Now keep in mind that if, there, if you are gonna be doing a fecal test, then you really shouldn't be swapping anything uh, because if they have a parasite, they could be transferring that over to uh, your healthy gliders. So you shouldn't be uh, pouch swapping or anything like that if there's a parasite question in your mind. So I'm going to, for the, just the sake of not being confusing, I'm going to be done talking about that part. But keep in mind that if there's a concern with parasites or you want to get that tested, everything including the glider itself and all of their toys and everything needs to be completely separate from your colony that you're going to be introducing them to until they have a health clear but I'm not gonna talk about parasites anymore. <laughs> Enough parasite talk. One of the most popular methods, this is not the one that I chose, but it's a scent swapping method. And the way that you do this method is you have your, your glider that you want to introduce or your gliders that you wanna to introduce to your other glider. You can introduce multiple gliders at one time, but keep in mind that the more gliders you have, 
the more different personalities you have, the more likely that you are not going to have a easy, successful intro. If you're introducing one Joey to another Joey, that's going to be almost 100% of the time a successful intro because they want each other and they're Joeys. They want to have a friend and they're young. But if you have gliders of varying ages, you have a large colony that you're adding one glider to, or you have a two glider colony that you're adding another two gliders to, all these different variables can definitely make an impact on how the introduction goes. So no introduction is guaranteed. These are just ideas and methods that people have used in introducing gliders. So scent swapping is one main method. And the way that you would do that, if you want to do the scent swapping method, you are going to be swapping pouches and toys, maybe even, especially fleece toys that would maintain a lot of smell in each other's cages. And you would want to have the cages close together, but not close enough to where they could reach out and grab each other. So they need to be a good distance apart. I would say a foot apart because if a, um, a tail comes out and the other one grabs that tail, that could be really bad. Uh, so they need to be at least a foot apart, I would say, uh, just for safety reasons. There might be a different recommendation on that. So if there is, I will put that here, you know, I'll list that here. Uh, but I think what I remember reading is a foot apart. I've never personally done this method, so I'm, I'm sorry if I'm not familiar with all of the exact di dimensions. But they need to be far enough apart. The cages need to be far enough apart that they can't grab each other. Um, so And then you start swapping each other's scents. So you have their sleeping pouch that, you know, glider A and B are in, and then you have glider C, and glider A and B will take... Glider C's pouch for one night while glider A and B's pouch goes in glider C's cage. So you swap the pouches so they get used to each other's scent and they become familiar with each other before you actually try to introduce them face to face. You can also notice how they interact between the cages. Um, and so you can see if they seem curious with each other, if they seem aggressive towards each other, that kind of thing. And then once you do actually um, do the introduction, then you're going to have to really be careful, obviously, just like any other method to watch out for some things. And I'll talk about that later. So that's the scent swapping method. Another method that I personally would never want to do, but I do know that people do it. Some breeders decide that they think that they should just put the glider in the cage with the other gliders. I'm personally not going to advocate for that. I think there's too much risk. If you have a ton of glider experience and you feel very confident in your abilities, then that's one thing, I guess. But I would never just introduce a glider into a, you know, a cage of gliders and just watch how they interact and hope for the best. I think that's a little bit of a recipe for disaster. And I think there's some other methods that are probably better. So I'm really not going to advocate that method. However, if you did that and it worked great for you, that's great. Um, I just think that there could be a lot of things that could go wrong with that. So that's all I'm going to say about that method. And then there's a the method that I chose, which is called a cold intro. And the way you do a cold intro is until you are actually going to have the gliders meet face to face, you don't have them scent swap. You don't sw you don't swap. <laughs> that's a little bit of a tongue twister. You don't swap their scents with each other and you keep them completely separate and even in different rooms if you can, so they don't see each other or smell each other until it's time to introduce. So for Stella Luna and Natiri, I had them, the breeder introduced them, so by the time they came to me, they were already a bonded pair. Then a year later, I got Balky. So I introduced Balky, I let him settle in his cage for I think a day or two, and then I introduced them all together in a bathtub. Now I'm going to refer you guys to my introduction videos that I did when I introduced Pika to the colony because you get to see a lot of this firsthand. So I'm not gonna go super in depth on it, but I do wanna touch on just the basics of what you do and then send you over to watch those videos for reference. So I did introduce Stella Luna and Atiri and Balki together in a neutral space that did not smell like anybody, a neutral, sleeping pouch that did not smell like anybody in and the space I chose to use was a bathtub for that introduction that actually went really really smoothly there was no issues at all they all smelled each other they saw each other and then they all chose to go sleep in the same sleeping pouch 
There was no aggression, no crabbing, nothing. It was super, super easy, about as easy as it could go. Now, a, a couple years later is when I decided to introduce Pika to the colony after I adopted her as a rehome. Uh, because of her health concerns, I did quarantine her. So she had to be in a completely different room. I could not swap their smells. I even changed my clothes between handling them and definitely washed my hands between handling them. So they didn't smell each other and there was no risk of exposure to any parasites that she might have. After she got the clear from the vet, I did, I did do an introduction and I documented all of that. So that's what I'm going to refer you to watch those. But basically, I chose to introduce them in a, uh, a mosquito net tent that is completely closed. I wanted to do that because it was different than what I did before and I wanted to be able to see if that was going to be a, a good method or not. It had some downsides that I didn't really factor in. Uh, one of those being that they climbed on my head a lot and I couldn't see or on like my back and I couldn't see how they were interacting. So that made me a little nervous and gliders can really sense your anxiety and tension. And so I opted to get out of the tent. I got them all in separate bags and I then introduced them in the bathtub. So personally, I wasn't a huge fan of the introduction in the tent. But if you want to do that, that is an option. If you do do that, though, you want to make sure that the tent or whatever area you're introducing them in, whether it's an empty closet, an empty room, um, I think the smaller the space is more ideal. I don't think I would do a big empty room, but maybe like a small empty closet or something. Uh, you want it to be a small space, but you want it to not have anybody's smells. So because my other gliders had used that tent, I did a deep clean on that tent before I introduced them in there. So... I introduced them in the tent. It didn't really go that great. I'll show you guys, you can reference those videos for that. And then I chose to move them into the bathtub. That went okay too. The main thing is that they, they get to see each other face to face. There is some room for some crabbing, some nipping, um, some aggression, but you don't want them to ball up. And I actually never witnessed my gliders actually balling up, but what it's been described to me as is they literally, so both gliders are now attacking each other and they are literally forming a ball. Sometimes you can see gliders actually play like this in a non-aggressive sense where they are bonded gliders, they're happy to be with each other, but they actually do kind of cup together and wrestle around. But when they're balling up and they're trying to aggressively hurt each other, they're gonna be making noises and it's gonna be very hectic and chaotic and loud. So mine never really did that, um, but if they do, you want to be ready to separate them with a large piece of fleece or um, an empty sleeping bag, you know, a sleeping, like a sleeping sack, something that they, what is this, what is this called? Sleeping pouch. <laughs> you want to have some sleeping pouches that you can put on your hands like a glove and separate them because they could really hurt each other. They could kill each other if they're allowed to stay balled up like that. So basically you want to monitor them. If they are balling up, you need to separate and probably just call it a day in that sense and separate, keep them in separate cages, start scent swapping, and then try introducing again in maybe a week or so. Uh, if they don't ball up, but they have some aggression towards each other, which is what happened with mine, I would recommend personally to let them work through some of that. Gliders in a colony have a hierarchy. So they have an alpha and then they have kind of a rank of other gliders. So if you don't let them work through that, um, you're not really gonna know if it's gonna be a successful introduction. And I think what happens, now this is just my theory, but I think what happens a lot of times with introductions, and I understand why it happens, is that people see their gliders start to bicker and even fight a little bit they're not balled up, but they are fighting a little bit and they don't allow them to, they say, okay, well then we're done. And they separate and then they don't, they do, don't even try introducing anymore because they think, okay, well they didn't accept them. So we're done. Or maybe they try a couple of times after scent swapping and it just doesn't seem to be working out because they don't love each other instantly. What I would say, and this is just based off of my experience is you need to let them work through some of those issues. You'll see if you watch those other videos that Balky and Pika did not get along. Uh, Balky chased Pika a lot. 
Pika was a little bit aggressive actually to my other gliders when they she first met them. She was nervous and scared, I think, more than anything. And so she decided to act aggressively to be defensive. Everybody loves each other now. But I really believe that if I had not stuck with it, um, I would have either drawn out the introduction for a very long time or the, I, they would just never would have successfully introduced. The positive thing with doing a cold introduction, which is the method that I used, is that they don't, this is the theory anyway, is that they don't become territorial because they haven't seen each other for a long time. So it's not like, okay, this is the glider that lives next door and we don't want them to come over here. They haven't already ex um, kind of come to a conclusion on whether they like each other or not. They're all kind of figuring that out at the same time when you do a cold introduction. So that's one theory as to why, that's why I chose to do a cold introduction because that doesn't give them the chance to get territorial. But that doesn't mean that the other introduction option doesn't work. It just, there's just two different theories and you just have to decide which one you're most comfortable with. Some will say that the scent swapping is actually the safer or the more cautious approach. I can kind of see how that could be true because they would be getting to know each other and more familiar with each other. But I also don't think that that's a guarantee that they're going to get along. Um, so basically, when introducing gliders, you need to be willing to, to work through some of the issues that they might come across. And uh, you also need to be willing to house them in separate cages until introduction is successful. What I ended up doing with Balky, because he was the one that was being aggressive towards Pika, is I actually removed him. I put him in a timeout cage. I put him in this smaller cage uh, for a period of time. And you'll see that and how I documented that. So if you're curious on how I did that, I'm not going to go in depth on that because I did document all of it already. But I did separate him and let Pika just get familiar with her surroundings, let her know the other two girls, let her get connected and bonded with them. And then I introduced Balky later. One thing that I wish that I had done and one thing that I would recommend doing, especially when doing a cold introduction, is to do a complete deep clean on the cage. What I did was I took the smells from both of their cages and I combined them all in a cage thinking that that would work. Uh, in my case, it did not. And I don't know how much, there was a few different things that I changed. So I don't know how much exactly that did affect things. But when I finally did get a successful introduction, I don't say finally, it's not like it took me months or anything. It took me a few days. But what I did is I took everything out of the cage, all the toys, everything. I took the cage outside, I sprayed it down, I deep cleaned it, and then I put it back in the room with brand new toys that smelled like no one, brand new pouches that smelled like no one, and then introduced them all together again. Now, in the meantime, they actually were sleeping together in the same sleeping pouch every day because I would put them in a no-sew bra bonding pouch that was on me and they slept together and they were fine during the day. For my gliders, it was just during the nighttime that they were not doing well. So if you found that your gliders are, you tried to introduce them, they seem to do fine sleeping together during the day, but at nighttime you're having issues, I would recommend having them sleep together when you are able to monitor them, when they're on you especially, um, so that you can make sure that there aren't any issues, at least for an extended period of time before you let them sleep together during the day unsupervised. But I would continue to do that so they really do continue to smell like each other and they now have their own colony smell. They all smell like each other because they've been sleeping together all day. I think that's even better than scent swapping if you can do that. If they won't sleep together, then obviously that's not an option. But if they are sleeping together fine, just like mine were, but at nighttime there is, is where the problems were happening, I would continue to do what's working and then see if you can problem solve. The other thing that I did do is I... I uh, used vanilla extract. So the vanilla extract that I did use, I ended up getting from, uh, well, anyway, I'm not even going to go into all of that, but basically you want to get the vanilla extract that does not have any alcohol. Um, and those are going to be found more in like the specialty baking aisles and not necessarily in your traditional aisle at the store. Mm. So that's what I would recommend for that. But I did, what I did is I rubbed it on my hands and then I rubbed it all over each glider. So they all didn't really smell just like themselves, they smelled um, like each other. And that seemed to help as well. At the end, I ended up just 
doing all the techniques at once and hoping that it would work. <laughs> so I'm not sure what actually helped the most if it was the, I think it was the deep clean. And I also had Balky in a separate cage. He was kind of in a timeout cage for a few days. Um, and I think the combination of those things helped a lot. So I hope that makes sense. I know this was a little bit all over the place. It's very hard be, uh, to describe because there's so many different variables that go into introductions. So just, I guess, to kind of recap, uh, you wanna make sure that your gliders are all healthy before you introduce a new glider to the colony. I'm not even gonna go into talking about breeding and stuff like that, or the, I mean, unneutered males. Well, okay, I'm just gonna touch on it really quickly. If you have an unneutered male, you really shouldn't be introducing them to a colony um, because if you have a colony of girls, um, you could have babies. And unless you are gonna be a reputable breeder that breeds with lineage, I don't recommend doing that. Um, if you have two unneutered males, you could have a major issue to where they could actually, even if they did along one day, the next day they could actually get so aggressive that they could kill each other. So I'm not gonna recommend that either. Mm -hmm. But what I will say is that if you have neutered males and girls, those are all fine to introduce. Some people say that, um, that you wanna have a ratio where you have more girls than boys, or at least even girl to boy ratio, because even when a glider is, is neutered, they still uh, do things with the girls. <laughs> so they're not as aggressive and their personality is, is more like a girl because they're, they don't, and they don't get the, the bald spot on their head and on their, on their chest. Um, but they, but yeah, they still do things. So some people will say that if you have more girls than boys, that's a better ratio. If you're going to have a large colony, other people say it doesn't matter. So, I mean, really the, at the end of the day, there's a lot of different information and some of it's con conflicting information. So I would really say before you start introducing, do your research. Don't let this be the only video that you watch about this. Um, please, please, please do your research. But like I said, just highlights, um, make sure that they're healthy, make sure that your gliders are neutered um, so that you can't have any un unexpected pregnancies or inbreeding possibilities. Um, make sure that you watch them and monitor them when you first introduce them. I would even recommend sleeping in the same room Here's a here's a note. Uh, that's what I chose to do. And really, if I hadn't chosen to sleep in the same room, I wouldn't have realized that there was such an issue until maybe later. Because the first hour or two, when they were up and around in the cage, they were totally fine. Um, I even said in my videos, like, oh, I think we have a successful introduction. And then later that night is when Balky started chasing her around and they started fighting. So that, um, you know, is a is a definitely an issue that can happen, it happened with me. So I would recommend sleeping in the same room so that at least for the first night, so that you can keep an eye on them and make sure that it really is a successful introduction. Mm -hmm. I would, the other note, I guess the other point I would like to make is just to try to let them work through some of it on their own. You'll see a lot of fighting in my videos, um, not balling up, no one was bleeding, um, but they definitely were not happy with each other and there was a lot of tension. So, and that would be, I can see how it'd be really easy to just say, never mind, nope, it's not successful and separate them. I would really encourage you though, to let them work through some of that. Gliders have a hierarchy when it comes to other gliders. Oh, hi, Natiri, you wanna see me? Um, and so it doesn't always go smoothly. So I would really recommend that you let them work through some things, but if they're balling up and they're hurting each other, then you do need to separate them and then do the things that I mentioned to try to try again in a week or so. My goal is to have a large colony. I really hope that that's in the cards and that's something that can happen. It might not be, and I understand that. So anytime you add extra gliders to the family, you need to be willing to house them separately if the, if the introduction is not successful or if it takes a long time. Sometimes it can take six months or longer for a, a, an introduction to actually be successful if you're continuing to try and it just isn't working. I do think that sometimes those introductions might take longer because people tend to separate as soon as there's any hint of a fight, um, but that's just a theory of mine. So anyway, I hope that makes sense. I'm sorry that this was a little bit rambly, but I did the best that I could. Um, so if you have questions, please comment below. 
please reference my other videos where I documented what I did with these guys because I think there's a lot to be learned from those and being able to actually see what I went through and what they went through and uh, do your research before you introduce your gliders to another glider or your one glider to another glider even. All right, have a great day, guys. Bye-bye. Hey, so today we're going to talk about, I don't, I don't know why I said, hey, hey, so today, I don't know, don't ask. A little bit experience, experience, yeah, a little bit, oh boy, not in it, but oh my goodness, no, maybe this isn't the day. Considered in amongst your other, in, I'm not an expert. So, and really there's basically, and from the, oh, okay, I gotta just start over. Okay, let's try this again.